Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome from, uh, greetings from my office, um, otherwise known as the garage. Um, <laughs> if you hear any rattling or strange noises, uh, it's because my garage door, my office door, um, is being barraged by wind and rain and what sounds kind of like a tornado going on outside out there. I'm not sure, sure. I'm pretty soon I'm going to probably see a, a little dog and maybe a witch on a bike and some other things you know, sailing past here pretty soon, but I just wanted to, I woke up this morning, I was like, this shit's absurd, and I, it's certainly not the first morning, and it won't be the last morning that I wake up thinking this, but I thought, well, who can I talk to about this, and I thought, you guys, I can talk to you guys, there it is, yep, there goes the witch, and there goes Dorothy, she's flying off, um, anyway, um, who can I talk to about the absurd you guys, um, you'll get it, if I blow away, I'm in, I'm in Brenham, Texas right now, so if I go off screen, please send the search parties looking for me. Um, but I, I wanted to run this past you guys and, and just see. I know I'm not alone in this, but, and I have to give, I know I'm also grateful for the fact that I can be a little aware of the absurdity of this, because I know there have been times in this process where I couldn't even begin to laugh at the absurdity of it. I, I was so mired down in just the hell and the pain that I, there's no way I could even begin to think this is bizarre, this is absurd, this is crazy. But I kind of feel like I'm in the middle of this Japanese game show. You ever seen these these game shows? You know, they're in, they're they're, they're speaking Japanese, so I don't know what they're saying. But there's also all kinds of like buzzers and things happening, and people are laughing, ah! And it looks like they're having an amazing time, and I have no idea what they're saying, what they're doing, and I have no idea even what the point of the game show is. Like I don't know what they're trying to do. Um, unless you're in Japan, right, which I guess you, you do understand, you can hear what they're saying, you know why they're laughing, you know what's going on. And so for you, it might be like an American game show. Your, your withdrawal might be like an American game show, like The Price is Right, where these people are like, Wah! you know, and they're running up to the stage and they're guessing on like detergent prices and winning, you know, washer and dryers and screaming like they've, you know, I don't know what the hell's going on. Um, but I feel like I'm in this Japanese game show in Benzo Withdrawal where there's all this stuff happening and it's all absurd and none of it makes any sense. And, uh, you know, I woke up today playing like my own little game of whack-a-mole symptoms where I'm, you know, I ate some, I, I ate something from a restaurant this weekend for the first time in two years. I was feeling pretty good and I thought, I'm not going to go out to a restaurant, but my parents were ordering in. I was visiting them. I thought, okay, I'll try it. I had like a little bit of lamb and a little bit of eggplant. Or, or whatever, a zucchini from this Turkish place. And legit within like 30 minutes, I'm like a human potato. I'm sitting on the couch now, like filled up with some sort of weird adrenaline. I feel like a human potato. I'm staring at a wall and I feel like somebody's poking my legs with forks. <laughs> like, what in the hell is this? And so I was thinking about this about this morning and I was like, it is like our own game show, right? And today I was thinking like, it's, it's like, again, like, Price is Right. Like, tell her what she's won, Bob. Well, Jennifer, you know, you in your benzo withdrawal, you've won a three-year round-the-world trip of all the nine circles of hell. Uh, and Dante is going to be your personal tour guide. And because you've, you know, given vitamin D a try or eaten a little bit of lamb from a restaurant, or maybe you tried that histamine-inducing banana last week, we're going to throw in the 10th and 11th circles of hell, um, where basically every day is Groundhog Day, and everything that was ever good for you is bad for you. Exercise, vitamin D, sunshine, social engagements, a little TV, all of it's bad for you now, and it's Groundhog Day, day after day. Good for you, Jen. And actually, because you're such a good contestant, we're going to throw in perimenopause on top of your withdrawal. So every day is a hormonal clusterfuck. Yay! Yay! I mean, I'm cheering, right? I'm running up on the stage. Good for me. Yeah. What a nut. This is a nutty place to be. So I'm sitting in this garage, and partly why I'm in this garage, my office, is because, I don't know about you guys, but I have these two dogs who I love dearly, a boxer and one dog that is part Corgi, part St. Bernard. That is true. It was, a, it was a stray. We found it. It is part St. Bernard, part Corgi. Giant St. Bernard-looking dog on legs this big. But these two dogs have become COVID dogs. They've also become benzo withdrawal dogs, right? So they've 
they've not really left my side in two years. And so when I try to make a video or do anything, I can't get away from them. And they snort and they pass gas and they, um, you know, their nails click on the, on the floor next to me or they are in my video with their butt or whatever's going on. So I've kind of had to find this little corner of the garage <laughs> where I can sit quietly and kind of sneak away from them, throw a treat and then just kind of run into the garage to just be with myself for a few minutes. But I was sitting with these, the, 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 I was uh, sitting with these dogs, and I was thinking this too. So yesterday, um, I was having a little bit of a window, and I decided I was going to run to the dollar store. And this is another absurd thing, right? So I go to this dollar store, which, by the way, I'd never been in one until a year or so ago, and they're a little overwhelming, but they're kind of cool, you know. And so I went into this dollar store, and I'm buying them dog treats. Now this is another part that's kind of heartbreaking, right? So like. A couple of years ago, I'm in my prime. I'm thriving in my life. I have this, you know, great, great, great clinical practice in my beautiful office in Rice Village in Houston, Texas. And I'm, you know, in between sessions, I'm walking my dogs to this boutique dog bakery for them to pick out personally their own little doggy bone cake or whatever little treat I was going to get them for eight bucks a pop. Right? Ridiculous, but awesome. And I can't wait to maybe get there again one day to be able to take them into a doggy bakery. In the meantime, now, because I can't work and, you know, life is just not where it was a couple of years ago, I go to the dollar store and I find myself yesterday, you know, looking for dog treats in the dollar store. And I found some of these like fake bacon treats, but for $2 and I found myself, and I'm not a cheap person, but I found myself feeling enraged that I'm in a dollar store and I'm having to pay $2 for dog treats. And I'm like, Jen, you are not thinking straight. Like, this is a little benzo brain. This is a little benzo rage. And I'm getting more and more angry. Like, why do I have to pay $2 for these dog treats in a dollar store? And I'm like, really reining this in. I get to the checkout line. And I'm like, do not bring this up. You're not somebody to bring something like this up. Don't say this. And I didn't. But the person checking me out is this, you know, lovely little 23, 24-year-old woman who's texting, you know, a friend. And I'm not angry she's texting a friend, but I find myself getting filled with rage and envy about she's probably texting somebody about when she gets off her shift, she's going to go to the park. Maybe she's going to go to a happy hour and have a beer. Maybe she's going to go throw the Frisbee. Maybe she's going to go to a movie. And I found myself just feeling like I want to punch her in the throat. And I thought, oh my God, what the hell is the matter with you? You want to punch this poor woman in the throat because she's texting somebody you don't even know, like about you, you're assuming that she's gonna to get to go see a fun movie. So it's just this, again, this crazy thing we're in where I'm having all kinds of emotions and whatever, and thank God I guess I'm having, you know, enough, I'm having moments of some clarity. Like last weekend I got really lucky and my brother, my adopted, I have an adopted brother who's 30, and got to go to his birthday party and I found myself singing to Journey, Don't Stop Believing. And I caught myself singing this song. I was like, oh my God, there I am, there I am. And, you know, within an hour, I'm back to like the human potato kind of struggling through to grapple through the rest of the party to get away from everybody so I can go home and stare at a wall and pace and feel bad for myself for a bit. So, you know, we're all in this crazy game show, this nut, this nutty time and um, you know, again, I woke up this morning feeling like somebody was sticking eight EpiPens in me at the same time. I'm in this surge of adrenaline and cortisol and hell. And, and, you know, I got this message from somebody the other day because I started putting on my YouTube channel, these other videos, you know, I'm a therapist and I've not been able to work. And that's, I've made that kind of abundantly clear. I think I speak about it all the time because it bothers me so much, but somebody had said, what if you, you know, what if you make videos about therapeutic topics? People can write in and ask you questions. So I started a second, I have my, ben, my Benzo videos, and I started this other thing called Therapy from the Sidelines where I discuss things I would normally discuss when I was a professor or when I was a clinician. And it's been great, right? It's, it's been great because it gives me a moment of like a reminder of who I was or who I might be again one day. Um, but what's interesting is somebody wrote me and who knows me and they're like, oh, you look fine. Like, you know, do you want to, you know, are you sure you don't want to go back to work? Are you sure you don't want it? And I thought, it's just so funny, right? Because if anyone could see me, even now, like I'm porky pig in it, right? Like I'm in a normal shirt, but I'm in like old ratty 10 year old gap pajama pants, here, right? And when I'm making those therapy videos, usually I'm, I'm trying to not porky pig it too much, 
but a lot of times I'm porky pigging it. But the other thing that nobody knows is that those videos are oftentimes are being made between 9 p.m. and 1 a.m. Because between 9 p.m. and 1 a.m., for some reason, the benzo gods, you know, give me a break. And on most nights, I feel fine. I mean, if I could work as a therapist between 9 p.m. and 1 a.m., I could probably work. But if you tried to have a conversation with me at 8, 9, 10 in the morning, noon, no, I'm, I'm a human potato half the time. So again, I, I was getting down about that and thinking, this is probably confusing people. I look really well. And then they're thinking, well, why did you leave your practice? Why did you abandon us after working with us for so many years? And the reality is I, I, I hated doing all of that. But at the same time, they can't see I'm porky pig in it. They can't see that it's 1030 at night or one o'clock in the morning when I'm talking um, or that I'm in a garage. You can actually see my little crawl space. There it is up there. You can see a little crawl space in my garage. Um, the good thing is you can't see the stack of boxes over there in the corner. But I guess I'm just saying, you know, let's let's embrace the absurdity. Uh, let's embrace the benstimacy that happens, right? The benstimacy being, you know, I get on the phone with people that I don't even know and I'm talking about, hey, is your poop yellow? Or, um, hey, I've taken my 10th, I'm peeing on stick for the 10th time uh, this week, checking for that UTI that I feel like I might have. Um, or, you know, um, are you afraid of bananas? Or what happens, you know, when you uh, eat a tomato? Um, does this happen? Anyway, has this happened to you guys? Do you guys do this or is this just me where I've made fr some friends in this and I will legit answer the phone like, my poop is green. I have friends I've known for 40 years that I wouldn't have a conversation about my bowel movements, my urine, my ovaries hurting, um, trying to figure out, you know, what organs out of whack today? Is it my gallbladder? Is it my pancreas? Is it my heart, my lungs, my ears? Um, but I call it benstimacy, which is another form of absurdity, right? I mean, it's a lovely piece in this, but the fact that we're having conversations basically with people we're, we've never met, probably will never meet, thank God for you guys, And but we're having conversations about, I've talked more about my menstrual cycle, my bowel movements, perimenopause, um, uh, uh, intimacy issues, you know, um, does anybody feel like they, they, have, they want nothing to do with ever being touched again? Like if I never touched again, <laughs> then I'll be fine. I mean, it's crazy what this process does. And it's crazy. The conversations we find ourselves in with in essence, strangers who become kind of our best friends overnight, this benstimacy. Anyway, I just wanted to talk some absurdity and I knew you guys would probably be able to relate I guess I'm glad I'm able to, to laugh about it. Um, you know, have you ever seen the movie um, The Money Pit? If you're able to watch TV, which I'm just starting to now be able to watch a little bit of TV. Um, like last night I watched a basketball game, it's March Madness, and I watched the game and then I vibrated for four hours afterwards. It's very fun. It's a new little twist on March Madness for me. My March Madness is watch a game and then vibrate for four hours. But if you've never seen the movie The Money Pit, um, watch it. It's from the 80s, but there's a scene where Tom Hanks has bought this house and it's just a money trap. And he, everything's falling apart. And, he's, and there's this scene where he's having to fill the bathtub by hand with buckets of water that he's running up the stairs. And the bathtub falls through the floor, crashes through the floor, onto the, the first floor, smashes into a million pieces. And Tom Hanks is just literally standing over this hole laughing this like crazy carnival maniacal sad clown dysregulated laugh like just nuts and that's how i woke up today like just like walter fielding in the money pit standing over my life going what in the hell has happened um anyway guys thanks for tuning in um if you ever feel like chatting about the absurd shoot me a message i'd love to hear from you and um uh, thanks for being out there, and I'm glad we're all in this together. I'm sad we're in it together, but I'm, I'm glad we're not alone. Take care.